to see if it works. Okay, cool. Everyone, we're gonna get started here at 12.15, just to let everybody know. Attendees, feel free to rename yourself and or introduce yourself in the chat. We'd like to know what organization you're from, what your title is, where you're located, if you'd like. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in to the 2022 virtual MLTC conference. This 45 minute session is New Collar Jobs with Joe Sarubi and Mary Lawrence. I'm Johnny with the National Community Action Partnership and myself as well as Amy behind the scenes are here to help things go smoothly for you. Do not hesitate to reach out to myself or Amy through the chat at any point during the event and we will be happy to help troubleshoot. If you are disconnected from the webinar, please rejoin through the VFairs platform. A few more technical notes before we get started. We are recording this session, which we made available to attendees for 30 days following the end of the conference. Please submit questions and comments through the Q&A and or chat function. Joe and Mary will be happy to answer your questions at the conclusion of the presentation. After the session, we ask that you please complete an evaluation, which we've linked in the chat. And with that, I will go ahead and turn things over to Joe and Mary. Great, Johnny, thank you. Um, Amy, I didn't know if you were gonna do introductions or if you want us, how do you wanna handle that? Yeah, I'd like to just take a couple minutes to introduce uh, myself and the project. I'm Amy English. I'm the project director for the Energy Partnerships Project here at the National Community Action Partnership. Um, very happy to be joined today by Joe Sarubi and Mary Lawrence with the Interstate Renewable Energy Council, IREC. Um, they're going to be talking about their green, build, uh, green jobs career map. Am I saying that correctly? Green, green building. buildings career map, thank you. Their green buildings career map. Um, this is an excellent presentation. I've seen versions of it before. It's very exciting to see how the mapping process works um, so that potential recruits can see what kind of a career trajectory they have ahead of them when they enter into one of the training programs in this field. Um, I know that nationally, the feedback we get from our network is that workforce considerations are primary concern, um, not just in weatherization, but in other aspects of community action as well. So I'm very happy to see that we have so many attendees today tuning in to hear from IREC. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe. I want to remind everybody to please fill out the session evaluation. And while Joe and Mary are talking, I will also post a couple of extra links in the chat. Take it away, Joe. Fantastic. Thank you, Amy. And folks, thank you for joining this session. I'm looking forward to sharing what we have on uh, on new collar jobs and how they do align um, you know, with the green economy. And we'll be utilizing a uh, career map process to really um, kick that kickstart that process. So um, oh, let's see, why is my, there we go, sorry. All of a sudden my, uh, my screen froze. There we go, sorry about that. Okay, I'd like to spend a minute just talking about choice for a second here and the built environment. 
Interestingly, uh, nearly half of all millennials, if they had a chance to do it over again, they probably would have taken a different career. Uh, we know when millennials were first coming out of high school, the argument was, hey, go to college, get a four-year degree, and there'll be tons of opportunities awaiting you when you get done with that. And we know that that really didn't happen as, as well as the millennials thought. They end up taking jobs just to get a job, pay off college loans, things of that nature. And now looking back, they wish they had a chance to do it a little bit differently. You know, so to me, a lot of it too is about choice. I'm gonna use myself as an example. Um, prior to uh, becoming a college professor and department chair, um, I, uh, coming out of high school, had a choice. Uh, I could have went to college. I was pretty good in sports and uh, had a lot of opportunities, but I chose to be an electrician like my older brother. He's six years older than me. When I was quite young, I was drilling holes, pulling wires, splicing wires, nailing on boxes, and learning the trade from the bottom up, as they would say. And I loved every minute of it. I really enjoyed the trades. So when I graduated from high school, I wanted to continue down that path. It wasn't until years later that I realized I had a passion for working with, with young people. I was coaching all types of different sports. So my next door neighbor, who happened to be an instructor uh, in a vocational school, he said, Joe, did you ever think about teaching your trade? And I was like, no, I didn't know I could do that. And uh, he was the one to help open my eyes to that on a career path, which I ended up going down and went back and got my degrees and uh, taught for 32 years. And I guess my point is, once I once I found out that I had a path that made sense to follow my passion, then it, it made life easier for me. And I had the passion to go back and, and earn my degrees. And we want to talk about that choice around a built environment and how that could play well for a lot of the underserved populations, especially as we move forward. So I'm going to talk about that through the Green Buildings career map and focus on new collar jobs. And just to talk about new collar jobs for a second, I, I can't say that I coined the phrase that was done by uh, the former CEO of IBM, Ginny Ramati, who, while she's retired from, um, from IBM as CEO uh, a few years back, she was talking about how IBM was struggling to find workers. And she said, you know, we don't need people with a bachelor's degree. We need people with competencies, with some skill sets. And she coined the term new collar jobs, jobs where people can get work through non-traditional ways. And when I heard that, I said, you know, that works well in a lot of industries, especially around the, you know, uh, construction industry or the green economy and the green industry, the green infrastructure. So in my mind, new collar jobs are focused on jobs that in many ways do not require a bachelor's degree. As a matter of fact, a lot of them don't require any degree, but somebody who might have gotten some basic training or and education through um, to just more of the non-traditional ones they could have gotten on a job training. Maybe they went through an apprenticeship. Maybe they went through a Votech high school uh, as, as well, but that there's actually jobs there that could lead them to a tremendous career path that they maybe never would have thought about. So the goal is how do we open their eyes to that? And then again, why career maps, right? It's a great awareness tool. That old saying, we don't know what we don't know, rings true in so many jobs when people talk, what are green jobs? What's, what do we mean around green jobs? And our particular focus is around the, the uh, big green buildings and just the jobs in that sector. And you're gonna see there are tons of jobs and careers just to have, be had in the green, uh, green building sector, but there's so many other jobs to be had in the green economy as well. So to me, it's a it's a great awareness tool to just you know give people a chance to understand what's going on. Furthermore, going back to the millennials because it's a population everybody seems to be trying to attract in some capacity. Um, nine out of ten of them again look at career path progression is really important to them if they were going to take a job. And when you look at the uh, more than 50% of them who said that they would potentially leave a job if it didn't have some type of career pathing 
or mapping process with a particular company that aligns a lot with what they learned when they first got out of school and they were trying to find a job, right? So um, these are studies that are all recent and I think it plays well for um, not only the millennials but a lot of different uh, age categories. So in my mind then, what is a map good for? When I think of career GPS, Everybody who has a smartphone and says, I've got to get from point A to point B, right? They're going to a new restaurant store, just going wherever they got to go on some trip. What do they do? They say, I'm here right? on their phone and they, they plug in where they want to go and they get a chance to get a vision of that career, of that map, right? And sometimes that map will give them multiple ways that they could get to that location. So to me, uh, career maps are like that kind of thing. That's why I call it career GPS, right? The opportunity for somebody to have a vision of where, they're, where they could potentially go with jobs that they might not otherwise have ever even thought of. And truly folks, I'm a very visual person. I always like to think about eye on the target. What's that target? And if you have a vision, there's a better chance you're gonna follow down that path towards that vision, right? To have that stick to if you can see the end game in so many ways. So um, going a step further, the, um, and these particular career maps, and we specifically think our career maps, probably most of all, are, are extremely interactive. Um, and it's a great tool to engage people with. And again, coming from the construction industry, we used to always say the right tool for the right job. We see this particular career map as being the perfect tool to work with young students, to work with displaced workers, right? Uh, uh, somebody who wants to upskill themselves um, into another particular job. Uh, somebody who's just been, could be a GED student who is finishing up their GED and is like, I don't know where I want to go for a job. Um, or could be, again, that displaced worker or just somebody who's been out of the workforce for a while and is trying to figure out how do I get back into the workforce. All right, so to me, this is a great engaging tool to work with either career counselors, school counselors, instructors, you name it. Um, but it's also extremely intuitive, which is great because it's, it's so intuitive, you can just hand them that tool, that resource, right, on a computer and say, take a look at this. And they'll start navigating and realize, wow, how exciting it could be. And I'm gonna show and talk a little bit more about the broad audience in the next slide. But the other important thing is, anytime IREC puts together a career map, we make sure that we have subject matter experts from around the country who have a broad background. And in this particular case in green buildings, and um, they're the ones who helped us put this together with the right job titles, the most needed job titles, and also the advancement routes, making sure that the from one job to the next, that is a realistic job for somebody to be able to aspire to. So we firmly believe that it's industry validated. Okay, and now my map is doing it again. Come on. There we go. Okay. How best to use career maps as a resource? Um, this is a condensed slide, folks. I can talk for a long time on all four of these particular areas, but for the sake of just, uh, you know, information and making this informative, you know, you look at these different areas and the different bullet points around it. And yeah, if I'm a student, just being able to go and explore jobs. If I'm a counselor, have an opportunity to show somebody, you know, great, great opportunities, especially you're going to see shortly what we mean by the new collar job, an opportunity with somebody who does not have a very, um, um, let's say, skilled background at this point, um, and then but can start out somewhere, but then still have a great career. Teachers having great lessons that they can talk about, especially if they're trying to teach them a particular whatever, and they're trying to explain why you need to learn this, having a career map to be able to show some of the different you know, skill sets and resources and or requirements for those jobs helps them better do their job because people all of a sudden see that proverbial light bulb go on. And again, for employers, not only for recruitment, but for retention as well. The opportunity uh, to work through their HR department and you know whether it's a six month yearly evaluation and start talking about those you know uh, career progressions you know where does that person see themselves we know that over 50 to 60 percent of people leave jobs because they never saw 
a career path with that particular company when there could have been plenty of career paths, but the company just never really presented that as an option for them to even consider. So with that, let me just give you a screenshot of if you were to go to the Green Buildings career map, this is what it would open up to look like. Those uh, kind of white bubbles that you see in the middle there, they represent job titles. And I'm gonna go to that in a minute. There's 55 job bubbles on there, uh, which is more than we normally kind of looks like domino blocks a little bit. Uh, trying to be careful not to have too many on there because aesthetically, if there's so many jobs I, I identified, it becomes a blur and it's just not as effective as a good tool. Uh, we usually like to keep between 40 and 45, but the the subject matter experts were so passionate about getting these other jobs on, on this map that we <laughs> we acquiesced and, and we were able to make it work. So um, anyway, that gives you a sense of what it looks like at the bottom. You can see the four different what we call ribbons or sectors and how it's broken down into the different sectors within the green building environment. All right, so with that, I'm gonna do a new share now and I'm gonna go live. And hopefully you can see my map as well at this point, great. So again, I just went over the sector names at the bottom, but if you notice, if I start to hover over any one of these particular, what we call bubbles, it brings up a job title, all right, all the way through, which is really kind of cool. And what's really neat is that if you then pick a particular one and you click it, it'll give kind of a quick one or two sentence just overview of a, of a job description. And it immediately starts to show some of the career progressions from that particular job that somebody can aspire to. What's really neat as well is then you got another hop button here for job detail that when you click it, it shows people working, right? A kind of a representative picture. It then gives more descriptor of the job, a lot more detail. It also then gives salary ranges and required education and training. And you can see in this particular case, high school diploma or equivalent, right? It starts talking about work experience, skills and requirements so that people have a better understanding what would take to, to get that particular job. I'm gonna go back to the map and um, I'm going to show another particular one from another area. I'm gonna pick this one, for example, a, a building performance installer. Now this is again, an entry level job, but look at all the different opportunities from that particular job. If I was to click the job detail, you can see, yep, I might be installing insulation in the attic at this particular point. But as I learn more on the job and I realize, all right, now they've got me caulking windows and doors. Now they've got me installing windows and doors. Now they've got me, you know, potentially running a crew. Uh, it's where I decide I want to go and how far I want to go with a particular career, you know, is what, what makes, it, um, makes it exciting. So having said that, um, I'm going to go into multi-sector routes, sample, and these, and if you notice, it's like from residential to professional, residential to operations. The subject matter expert said these are jobs or you know advancement routes that actually are something that people do all the time. I might start out at that building performance installer, become a crew leader, and then I realize I'm really good at what I'm talking about and I get into product sales. And then I love that product so much, I become working for a company where I start to do some diagnostic work and being able to go into a building and start telling them troubleshooting where the building you know, is, is underperforming. And, and making great money doing it. And it started out with a high school diploma or a GED. All right, so there's an example of um, multi-sector routes across different sectors within the industry. And, and we've got um, five of them listed here. Now with that, I wanna go to the new collar jobs because I think this is the highlight of this map as well. And especially for this particular audience. When you click that top button, says new collar jobs, it gives a descriptor of what we mean by new collar jobs. And I already kind of gave you that overall description, right? Uh, jobs that do not require a four-year degree. Out of the 55 jobs though, notice 32 of them are highlighted, did not require a four-year degree. 
And I can also tell you that a good proportion of these don't require any degree at all, which is really cool. So when you look at all the, especially all the entry level and the majority of the mid-level jobs, these are jobs that can be had without a four-year degree. So in my mind, it gives somebody hope, an opportunity where if they just finished their high school and they're struggling or they finished their GED or they've been displaced from work and they don't know where to go, and the thought of having to go back, right, and take 124 credits and go to school full-time or go to school part-time, and that just seems so overwhelming to them. What a great way to be able to start in a wonderful career where you can make a great money and have a great career with a lot of advancements. So let me go back to that uh, building performance installer, for example. Notice all the opportunities from there. And let's say after I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Where does that take me to mid-level? Okay, maybe after a while, if I'm very motivated, I could become a, a crew leader. Look at all the jobs that are available to me from that particular position. Depending upon the contractor, I might become a crew leader after six months or a year, or depending if it's a smaller company, maybe longer, depending upon how many workers work for them. But then if I was to look at these top jobs, here's a building home performance contractor. So I will tell you folks, all across the country, that career path is happening all the time. Somebody starting out at entry level with a high school diploma or GED, got into work, started to doing this kind of work, loved it, became a crew leader. And then after a while said, you know what? I'm gonna start my own business. And they get themselves a nice panel truck and they open up a business and are out there as an entrepreneur working for themselves. Um, or maybe they decide to get into commercial work and they, um, they end up becoming more of a commercial construction for person and continue to work for com a company, but on a com commercial side. Anyway, you get the idea here. It's that vision. It's an opportunity for them to get excited about jobs. All right. Moving along up on the top here along this uh, horizontal bar. This is a area we call about this map, which gives a nice descriptor. And again, this is where people like, how did this happen? How, how did they come up with this map? And, and then you know where the funding you know, came from. So it's just kind of a descriptor about the map. What's nice as well is there's a nice descriptor about this industry. So this gives people a chance to understand where this industry is. And of course, we know in the energy efficiency industry is one of the fastest growing markets for jobs in the entire country. In many cases, twice as fast as other job areas or sectors. And then going down further, each one of those subsectors, we give more detail about that particular job, whether it's building and operations, commercial or residential. So people again, become more informed about where they think they might wanna start. Or if you are a career counselor, helping somebody to better understand about these jobs. And then we also have a section called resources. And we end up re having to regroup them into several different categories because Mary and I realized as we were putting this together that we have so many different valued you know, um, resources for people who are going at it, uh, you know, government agencies, trade and industry associations, and then organizations targeting, um, you know, supporting target populations, as you can see. There's community action partnership right on the top there and moving right on through. Uh, and then energy efficiency advocacy groups, uh, advocacy groups. So, gives you a sense that there's resources available. And then lastly, um, a section called frequently asked questions, you know, and, and moving through, which has got some great questions. And like, for example, what's a green building? And then it gives a descriptor, all right? And then how does the green buildings fit into the larger energy efficiency industry and about education and training, uh, labor market information, things of that nature. So um, at least, as an overview, I'll stop right there and um, uh, give you a sense of what's going on. But uh, hopefully uh, that gives you a quick 
update, quick chat about this particular career map, but then a lot of time, Mary, I had 20 minutes, I think right on the nose. <laughs> you are. Yeah. And you've, you've gotten a lot of feedback, uh, Joe, in the chat. Folks really appreciate the demonstration. It's helpful to hear someone describe uh, the map and walk through it. Uh, so we're grateful that folks have found that useful. Beautiful, beautiful. So um, if, if so anybody has... Good, if an yeah, I was just going to say, if anybody has any uh, questions, um, if they want to type those in the chat, um, we're happy to answer uh, any questions that you might have. Um, and in the meantime, while uh, while folks are thinking, um, Joe, some of the one of the questions that people often ask, um, and that um, they they sort of wonder where the salary information came from in the map and how you handled that. You know, knowing that obviously salaries in California might be different than salaries in West Virginia, say. Yeah, Mary, thank you. You know, uh, the Bureau Bureau of Labor Statistics has great data on that, um, and they have it by state, sometimes city, sometimes region. Um, we find though that when you're putting job titles together, the job titles don't necessarily exactly align with all the jobs that the you know the BLS has. So the so the jobs that are on a career map that do align with specific job titles um, within the Bureau of Labor Statistics, then we've used that data. When they didn't, which happened a lot, unfortunately, um, we ended up looking at eight different regions throughout the country. And we looked at cities, rural, what have you. And we kind of came up with a specific range based on that particular geographic location. We also know even within a region, some you know, 20 miles away from a city, a big city or whatever, the salary range could be dramatically different, right? So that's why you see a range, and we try to explain that in the career map too. That you know, somebody who is is living in Mississippi, for example, in a rural area, might not make as much money on a particular job as say somebody who's living just outside of New York City or outside of Chicago, for example. So. Good question. Um, what about, what do you say to folks who say, you know, this is a great tool. I'm looking for the job though. Like, I, or I'm looking for like, where's the job in my area or where is the training program in my area? Um, and how does this map sort of facilitate that? Another great question. You know, the challenge around a national map is the idea that it's hard to put all the job boards and making sure that we've got it accurate for specific jobs. As far as education and training, there's over a thousand community colleges in the United States. There's tons of, of, of private organizations that do phenomenal training in this particular area. To list them would be overwhelming. So that's why we just recommend to people, if you like the job that you see on the particular map, you can quickly go out and Google that particular job title and all the different job boards will come up within your specific region. You can put your town, your city into that job board and it'll list those particular jobs right at that moment. You can also do the same kind of thing for the training within a geographic area because even on some of this stuff, training that's being done up in the Northeast might even be slightly different than training that's being done in the Southwest. Okay. Hey, Joe, we have a question that's just come in uh, via the question and answer function. Meg Power asks, will you be updating salaries in this tool? We, um, we, we that's a great, it's a great question. Um, we uh, receive funding from the Department of Energy, and we believe that the salaries will hopefully carry for a couple of years. Um, and our goal will be to go back to the Department of Energy and say, we need to do an updated version, a reiteration, because not only do the salaries change, but also the jobs and the job titles that are most in demand. I will tell you the solar career map, we did three iterations of that over the years. That was one of the first ones Mary and I put together a number of years ago, and it's ready for an update as well. So our goal is, you know, with these, uh, you know, government sponsored kind of initiatives to keep going back to them and say, okay, we're ready for an update here. We need it to keep it fresh and relevant. Great question. Yeah, yeah. these tools, these, IREC is, um, uh, IREC is committed to these career maps um, in its sort of long-term um, uh, thoughts on workforce development. And uh, we feel really strongly that, 
Um, they're really practical tools that folks like yourself, right, when you're out there uh, helping folks find careers and jobs, um, we get lots of feedback that um, similar to the feedback that you all are sharing in the chat that it's a really useful tool. And so it's something that um, IREC intends to uh, continue to support over time and, uh, like Joe said, update uh, with additional funding. Mary, if you want to mention the uh, block at the bottom, which I forgot to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we we are recognizing now that we have a couple of these maps, right? That these jobs are very um, connected via this sort of larger construction trades um, in industry. So. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the maps are connected in some way. Uh, we're looking at how to do that in a more integrated way in the future. But for now, there is that little block at the bottom of um, each of the maps, actually. So we've referenced um, the Green Buildings career map. We also have the solar career map. And we also have a map for the HVAC and refrigeration industry um, that's called Careers in Climate Con Control Technology. So all three of those have this that little box at the bottom that says um, explore other career maps. It takes them to a general um, IRAC webpage that lists all three other career maps. So it's a great way for folks to access um, and connect to um, the other three industries with jobs that are very, and skills that are very related. Um, great. So we definitely have some folks indicating that they're going to, uh, to share it. Um, one last question with just a little bit of time that we have left. Um, you know, how do we, there's, there's folks that might look at it that are sort of currently in the industry and wondering where they might go in the future. Um, and, uh, they might not see their current job title on there, um, and wonder, um, you know, where you came up with those 55 that you chose and, um, and yeah, wh yeah, where those came from. Uh, good question, Mary. You know, when we started this process, I will tell you, we started with well over a hundred jobs um, that we were, and then we had to whittle it down. And I kept pushing the subject matter experts saying, we've got to get down to 40, got to get down to 40. And they kept pushing back and we eventually end up with 55. So if somebody doesn't see their specific job title, it could mean that one, it's recognized under a slightly different title, something that's similar. So if they see a particular job that kind of looks like theirs, it might just be called something different. Um, and it doesn't mean that that job isn't important. It just means that these were ones that the subject matter experts felt it was most important to highlight at this particular time. And also with the idea of thinking advancement routes and from those jobs, you know, opportunities above and beyond, you know, all, all play into when we finally say, that's it, we're not making another change. <laughs> And we do we do have alternative uh, job titles that are actually listed. If you yes. if you check out the job details page um, under the the job title that's listed there, there are oftentimes some additional um, alternative titles that we sort of recognize that might be out there. And uh, we're Joe Joe scoured uh, job boards uh, looking for what all of these jobs were called to make sure that they're accurate and what employers are really using. So. Um, great. Additional folks continue to say that uh, they're excited um, to be able to use this and uh, it'll be really helpful um, in their educational trainings uh, with folks. So, Fantastic. Well, great. If there's no other questions that this has been great, I, we really appreciate your time today um, and uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to use it. And uh, um, if you need to get a hold of us, that was my fault. I don't think I put uh, on the bottom of the career map, Mary, our, our emails, if, um, um, if we want to put that in a quickly in the chat. Sure, I'll type that in the chat. And also someone asked, how do you get to this tool? Um, <laughs> oops. Uh, I don't know if that was on one of the slides uh, that Joe had there. on the there. last slide. I could bring I that back up. <laughs> Amy, yeah, Amy will be able to send it out, but I also um, put it in the chat. It's Green Buildings with an S, greenbuildingscareermap.com or .org. Actually, either either will take you there. Um, yeah. And we'll be yeah, putting the slides right on there. the event app mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the link to the, to the tool. Great.
Yeah, and I was wondering if we could read some of the nice comments that came in the chat, just for the benefit of anyone who may be listening and not reading. Um, we did get some supportive input from some of our agencies, like Christine said, um, community action partnership. Whoops, where did my thing go? Community or Dwight Ford said we've been working to get into the green industry for the past two years, mostly exploring and researching where we could. This will be extremely helpful as we carve out a space that targets the industry and educational trainings available in our area. Love it. Um, Love I'm not awesome. sure where Dwight is from. Christine from Community Action Partnership of Orange County um, said I'll share it with our apprentices doing OTJ training for inspector assessor and our climate core fellows. Perfect. So that's the kind of feedback that we want to hear from the network. We hope that some of our other attendees will also try to incorporate it into the work that they're doing. Some of you may already be using it, of course. Thank you to everyone for participating. Don't forget to fill out the survey, um, the evaluation in the survey link that Johnny posted. Uh, I'm amazed that we got to the end of the session early. Uh, we're more than happy to stick around and continue any discussion. If anyone would like to come on mic and ask a question live, go ahead and use the raise hand function. Um, I'm, one of the questions that I was planning to ask, you did already address a little bit. Um, I was going to highlight the fact that IREC also has other career maps on their website. So the Green Buildings career map is just the latest in a string of career mapping projects that IREC has undertaken. And I think those career maps are very, very helpful. And we've got that in the chat. Thank you. Say, um, uh, Amy, too, that all of a sudden, while we've been doing this for, for years through IREC, all of a sudden it's become a um, just a, a key word in industry. People are all around now starting to talk about career mapping because they realize the value and the importance. And especially mm -hmm. with a lot of the younger generations, uh, not only the millennials, but the Gen Zs, they, they really want to have a sense when they're going to take a job. Um, one, that there is career progression, but also that the company they're going to work for is operating in a very sustainable way because that it's, it's while money is still the number one driver, when you look at all the surveys out there, right behind it is working for a company that has that extra value add that they feel like they're doing something that's contributing to the earth in some capacity, right? Knowing that hey, they're mm -hmm. working in an environment that is saving the planet, <laughs> right, in some way. So uh, all those things, uh, you know, start to come to life. Absolutely. All right, not seeing any other raised hands. How about if we go ahead and close out the session and end the recording? We'll give everybody a few extra minutes for an extra cup of coffee because we know that you're going to come back for the rest of the sessions. <laughs> um, the next session in the energy track today is understanding pay as you save energy loan programs, which is going to start at 1.30 um, Eastern time, which is 12.30 Central time. And then later this afternoon, we have electrification and fuel switching in weatherization. And we end up the day with maximizing weatherization funds in public utility commission proceedings. So all attendees today will receive an email from me next week with a link to the recording and copies of the slides and restating any of the links that were posted in the chat. So I look forward to interacting with you some more. If you have any questions, I'll put my email address in the chat to close out the session, feel free to reach out to me directly if you'd like additional information or to be connected um, to one of the subject matters that we covered today. Thank you all. Thank you, folks. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.